had one. And then I had the privilege of watching this man come into the ring, watching Billy C repeat that, and this guy to pick out the fighter that Billy C called. So I think there might be a little bit of truth to that. Regardless, he's here today. We're going to let him talk to himself a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, huge round of applause. Make some noise. Marlon, the magic man. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my fellow Canadian guy, John Scully. Hey, we did it, John. <laughs> um, let me tell you, um, I, had a, I had a real, I had a beautiful, beautiful boxing career. I was uh, boxing in Glitzman. Boxing took me all over the world. When I decided to uh, stop fighting amateurs, I said to myself, um, before I hang the gloves up, let me turn pro and see what I can see what I can do. My goal, my goal in boxing, wasn't to be the WBC champion or uh, the WBA champion. My goal in boxing and the welterweight class, my goal was to be the best welterweight on the planet. And February fourth, nineteen eighty nine, the people all over the world, my peers, the old, the young, he said, look at that guy, Marlon Stalin, that's the best walk to wait on the planet. And at that time in my career, I felt I'd say, my career was over. I didn't, I didn't get into this game for the money, like I said. I didn't get into, get into this game to, to show that um, I can do it all. I got into this game for one thing, and that was to be the best walk to wait on the planet. I fought a lot of undefeated. I fought on network television more than any other fighter in the world during the 80s. And I wasn't the champion. I fought back then when we could watch the world championship fight for free. Mm -hmm. Back in back in 81, 82, 83, 84, 85. I fought every year on network television during the during the eighties. Um, after my last fight, which was a close fight, and um, at that point in my in my career, my one of my handlers said to me, um, "Marlon, do you do you want us to do you want us to um, fight the decision?" At that point in my life, I felt I'm finished. You know, I I did everything I can do in boxing. One thing one thing um, you can't do. Is beat the uh, beat Father Time. I, the reason why I um, I I got out of it, too many of my friends started being champions. So I said that uh, uh, you know it was time it was time to leave. I mean money wise, oh, John, you know, if 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 if, if I was if I was twenty years younger, most of these guys out there today, and I'm not crapping on the the, the fighters out there today. Most of these guys out there today, I, I say to myself right now, if I was to train for yeah. another year, yeah. I could be a champion tomorrow. I believe you. Yeah. Because um, with, with, with the skill I have, yeah. and you know, like I said, my, my game, my my game was hit and don't get hit. Yeah. I I was a fighter that I don't like fighting wars. I mean, like I said, um, my, my 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 game was um, to to. Try to be the best, and like I said, when I um, when I fought in 1987, I fought. I defeated Mark Breland, Olympic champion. He ever lost a fight in six years, and I knew from my from my my status that I can beat Mark Breland. I knew that I was supposed to beat Mark, Mark Breland, and I said to myself in that fight. If uh, if I'm behind after the twelfth round, I was gonna gamble, and I was gonna, I was gonna fight. You know, I didn't gamble. I don't, I don't like getting hit. Um, the good Lord, the good Lord pulled me through that fight because um, 
I packed my cream up with a, with a body shot. I threw a, an upper cup, which the upper cup uh, missed him. Came right down into a hook. And that, at that, that time, show, t told the world that this guy is something to reckon with. But you know, the world, the world wasn't satisfied because I didn't fight Lloyd Huntington. And Lloyd Huntington <laughs> was one of the guys that on uh, February 4th, 1984, I fought a Donald Curry. And at that time, Donald Curry was one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world. I fought Donald Curry in 1984 for the IBF and the um, WBA championship. It was a good fight. My, my coach, my, my, my manager told me, Got to back Donald Curry up, because the first time I was talking to Donald Curry, and I had him running all over the ring. So my, my trainer told me, you got to back Donald Curry up, back Donald Curry up. You know why I didn't back Donald Curry up that day? Because I couldn't back Donald Curry up. He wasn't backing up. <laughs> and and uh, that fight, I hit Donald Curry when nobody in the world beat me that day. But Donald Curry. And after that fight, I got on the ring saying, you know, that guy beat me. And that was a that was a mouthful. I had to I had to take that. And I I got lucky and fought another fight with Jose Barrett, which was supposed to be he was 16 and 0 with 15 knockouts. Supposed to be a Hellraiser from New York City. But he was fighting the magic man. <laughs> <laughs> I knocked him out in three rounds, three or four rounds, something nice. like that. And then I, I got blessed to, to fight for, fight Mark Breland in Columbus, South Carolina. Got through that. I fought Mark Breland down in Columbus, South Carolina. Everybody talking about Mark Breland's right hand. He was knocking guys out in the limit with that right hand. When I fought Mark Breland that day, Mark Breland had a jab that hurt like most guys' right hand. Mark Breland hit me so hard in that first fight, I heard the commentator say, ooh. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I heard the commentator say, ooh. <laughs> and I had my, my trainer told me, Marlon, you're too strong for him. You're too strong for him. And that eleventh round, I hit him with a good body shot. He backed up, and I caught him on the roof, and hit him with a, um, a hook that put him down. After that fight, like I said, people still wasn't sure about me being the best in the world. So I had to fight Lloyd Huntington, an English guy who beat Donald Curry, who had beat me. I knew at, the, at that time, I was saying for a while, that I'm the best watchman in the world. Nobody believed it. I fought a Lloyd Huntington, February 4th, 1989. He was supposed to be a hell raiser. I told people before that fight, by the middle of the fight, that guy's gonna wanna be my friend. <laughs> and believe me, in that fight, by the middle of the fight, he started trying to be my friend. <laughs> after, after that fight, when I beat Lloyd Huntington that day, believe it or not, after I beat Huntington that day, my career was over because I, I did everything I wanted to do in boxing. And it was time for me to, to get out. But through, but through my, my, my ups and downs of boxing, I met some, some beautiful people. Like you fans in here. I mean, you guys supported me. And I bless and I thank all you guys for, for follow my career. And I want to thank uh, Billy C. for putting me into this hall. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it for awards right now, but this wouldn't be proper unless we gave the man himself the stage. This isn't pre-planned, so we'll put you on the spot. Billy C. Yeah, come on up here, bro. <laughs> Every day for a couple hours. <laughs> yeah.
Uh, I just want to thank everybody for coming. What we tried to do here is uh, lay the groundwork for something that we want to build on. And I think we accomplished that today. Uh, although I would have liked to have seen a lot more people in here, I'm real happy with the people that are here. I just want to thank everybody for coming. And uh, keep it in your minds because we're going to do it again. And I'm glad that all these fighters that are here, they're going to be part of our committee. They're going to help us elect the rest of the people that come on. Thank you very much. Have a drink.